Hey everyone, today we're upgrading the cooling in my Hi White 70 with the new GA2 Lite 360 AIO from Lian Li. We're installing this AIO with the custom push pull fan setup using the stock GA fans and some Lian Li TL120 wireless fans that I already had laying around. And we're going to be cooling the Ryzen 9 9950X on AM5, which tends to run hot, so cooling does matter. Alright, let's talk about some of the specs for this AIO, starting with the model number. Model GA2L36PB Specs Pump runs at 3800 RPM Radiator is 397 by 120 by 27 mm 400 mm tube length Single wave aluminum fins Stock fans push 73.14 cubic feet per minute 5 mm of mercury pressure and 29.8 decibels A at full blast. Now, instead of running a stock, I'm gonna be doing push-pull configuration with my TL120 wireless fans. These fans are gonna go sit right underneath the radiator and the GA fans will sit on top of the radiator. These push up to 90.1 CFM airflow with 3.97 millimeters of mercury pressure, 33 decibels A weighted maximum. They are a good match for GA fans without being an overkill or unbalanced. And now let's start by removing the stock fans and replacing them with the TL120 wireless fans. Now, if you're gonna be running a push pull setup just like me, you're gonna need to order some extra long screws. For me, I needed 37mm for my height Y70 with the bracket being on top with the GA fans. And along with that, it comes with some washers. I just use the washers just in case because I don't wanna go through my radiator. Just be safe. Be safe with long screws. You don't wanna have too long of a screw and then go through your rad and mess it all up. So be safe. Make sure you do your research according to your case. Alright, let me just address this now before someone drops a paragraph in the comment. Yes, I'm mixing two different fan models in a push-pull setup. And no, it's not going to cause any turbulence, whine, pressure stall, and here's why. Because both of the fans are pretty similar to each other. They're both 120mm fans, comparable airflow, pressure rating but the only thing we're doing is running the GF fans 10% faster than the Lia Lee fans and the whole reason behind it is the GF fans will push more air through the radiator with more force since they have higher static pressure and the TL fans pull more air into the radiator with a higher CFM airflow rating and in this setup they're perfectly balanced with each other and I will show you in BIOS and L connect how you're gonna set them up now let's start by taking our old AIO off and prepping our PC for the new AIO. Now in this setup, I'm going to be using new AM6 from Arctic. And I usually like to do the spreading method, so this is what I'm doing here in this video. And here we have my supervisor come check on me, making sure I spread the thermal paste perfectly fine, otherwise she'll scratch me or either bite me, because she doesn't like when I mess with our PC. Now we'll go ahead and install the pump for this AIO and making sure we set it down evenly, go in an X pattern or a cross pattern, whatever you want to call it. And please do not over tighten your AIO pump. This will ruin your motherboard and make sure you double check, triple check everything after installing, making sure you, all your wires are connected perfectly fine. 
all your air holes aids are sitting perfectly fine. Here's my supervisor making sure everything is connected the way it should be. Now after checking everything is connected, let's go hook this up and see the performance. Now these GA fans are going to be controlled with BIOS and they're going to be connected straight to the motherboard. For the TL fans, they're going to be connected to a SATA cable and they're going to be controlled with L Connect with a wireless dongle. Now here in BIOS, go into hardware monitoring, go onto your pump, making sure your pump run at 100% at all time, disable both of these settings and put the pump on 100%. For CPU fans, you can pause the video, copy my settings. With these settings, the GA fans are running 10% faster than the TL fans. One thing I do want to say, only use these settings if you're using a similar system as me. Now in system fan 3, which is the TL fans, both of these options needs to be off and put these fans at 100% so they can get the maximum power. Either way, they're getting maximum power because they're connected to the SATA cable, but I do not want any interference. Now we'll go back and double check everything, making sure everything is set up the way we want it. And then we'll go ahead and save it and go back into Windows and use the L Connect to control the TL fans. Now let's set up our wireless fans in L Connect. They're controlled by RPMs, not by percentage. So at 30, we got 520 RPM. For 50, we got 1040 RPM. At 65, we got 1430 RPM. At 80, we got 1780 RPM. And 95 being the max at 2100 RPM. Now let's start with some benchmarking here, starting with Cinebench R23. And one thing I do want to point out that my CPU is overclocked and you'll see in the video with the results. But the thing is, this AIO is a beast. It's working perfectly fine with my overclock and it's making my CPU be stable with the overclock that I have. Because even with this heavy overclock, I'm getting the maximum temperature of 94 all across my CPU. And even when you look at the core clocks graph down there, it's staying at 5.2 consistently and even hitting higher at some point. Now let's talk about noise. With my current system, the way I have it set up in this video, I can barely even hear that thing. It's basically like a normal 360 AO. Even normal 360 AOs, you're going to have to put the fans on 100% to actually get the full performance out of it. But this push-pull setup, I don't have both of those fans, at neither of them set at 100%. So the way my setup is actually quieter than most of the 360 AO. And I'm not compromising on performance at all. For our multi-core, we got 44,617 and single score, we got 2298. Now let's move on to 3 mark. Now even though this is a synthetic benchmark, you can see the CPU utilization at 9 to 10% 
and our CPU is sitting right at 55C to 54 to 56. This is usually with the games that are not that heavily CPU bound. So this is what you're going to see with most of the gameplays. Now, that won't be the case with Indiana Jones or Fortnite or other games that are heavily CPU bound. Let's run another one of these tests. Now even in this synthetic benchmark which is more CPU demanding, it's not hitting anything over 60. It, there's a peak for 60 and then it comes right down. Again, it's hovering around 57, 55, around there. Now here we are in Indiana Jones, I'm trying to record with one hand and play with another. So hopefully this works. So as you can see, it's sitting right at 66, 65, it's not going anything over. Utilization keep going up and down, but then, you know, the temperature staying right there. Before when I had the other 360 AO, you know, it would go over 73, 75 when playing this game, just like this. But, you know, right now I'm really happy with the push-pull setup and not being too loud and my temps are great. I'm getting great performance out of this. And for my idle temps for my Ryzen 9950X, it's been sitting at 46 to 47 at all times. And you know, whenever I shut down my PC and started the next day, I seen it sometime goes down to like 44, you know, when the first initial like setup is. As I use it throughout the day, it stays around 46, 47. Web browsing, same thing, 46, 47. So I'm getting a perfect performance out of this AIO. And I hope this video was helpful and entertaining enough. And if you guys liked the video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next video.